Hi booktube and welcome to a new video. Um, I don't seem to have done a tag for ages and I've been casting around. There don't seem to be that many around. I don't know if that's because it's the summer and people are away. Um, so I've had to delve quite far back for this tag and this is the A to Z authors tag which is uh, kind of what it says on the tin which is um, using the surname of authors uh, see if you've got one that in your collection uh, for each of the letters A to Z. And I'm going to split this into two and I'm going to do one for male authors and today's which is for female authors. So it's only female authors. Uh, it's only authors that I've read and um, ideally fiction. I don't think I've got any non-fiction in here but we'll, we'll have to see. So um, starting with the letter A, unfortunately I can't find any of my Kathy Acker books. I don't know what's happened to them, where they've gone. Uh, this year I read Olivia Lang's book Cruda, which channels the late Kathy Acker. Um, so I really wanted to have Kathy Acker for A, but um, sadly not. So um, I've gone with Kate Atkinson. And these are my Kate Atkinson books. More than I can hold in one hand. Oh God, there's another one. So that's the first one I read, Case Histories, which is a, a sort of detective story. It was a really good character. I can't remember what the name is, but it's been made into a TV drama series with Jason Isaacs playing the lead role. Um, that, that was a really good book. So then I went back into her previous collection, One Good Turn, which I think was that happened in a theatre. Again, it's crime fiction. Yes, the, the Edinburgh Festival that happens in because uh, that's where the, the detective is based. Human Croquet. Um, and then into the more recent books. So, Started Early, Took the Dog. And When Will Something Good Happen? Uh, but then we've got into her recent trilogy, uh, sort of set around the first and then the second world wars. The first being uh, Life After Life and A God in Ruins. And I must admit, I don't really, I haven't really enjoyed these two. So I'm kind of keen to see what she produces after the trilogy. The third one's out. I'm not going to read it. Let's see what Kate Atkinson produces after that. <coughs> B. The letter B. Nicola Barker. A difficult writer. Difficult for me because I really like the idea of what she does, but not the execution. So I've said in various places, um, The Cauliflower, which I did not finish and clear which uh, was so so but uh, the one book of hers I don't have because I, when I read it this year and I've got a dedicated video I will post the link to was Happy which won last year's Goldsmith Prize which again I didn't enjoy but I did appreciate what it was trying to do so I give her props for that <coughs> I, I could say I'm going to cough all the way through this C. Rachel Cusk uh, who's an author I read uh, a long time ago when she first started writing which I guess was the 80s or 90s. When was this published? Oh, 2003. <laughs> Rachel Custer, Lucky Ones. There's another one which I've left in my library outside. But she came back into focus this year with Outlaunch, the first in a trilogy. And again, I've posted a dedicated video to this. Um, I'll uh, post the link. Didn't work for me, but raised some very interesting questions as a reader and for me as a writer. I just find Rachel Cusk a bit emotionally cold and detached, which is unusual in a female writer. You can normally expect that of male writers. D. Uh, now, I've recently read Marguerite Duras is um, what's it, The Lover. So she very easily could have gone into that. But I've, I've gone for D. Emma Donoghue's Room, um, which I talk about in my... Uh, one of my early videos about the difficulties of child narrators in serious literary fiction. Um, so again, for me, a book that didn't work, but again, huge amount of appreciation of what she was trying to do. E. Jenny Erpenbeck, German writer. Now, when she first started publishing through Portobello Books, there were all these lovely little, sort of little hardback editions, which, I, you know, I just thought were great. One of them was about the daughter of a torturer in some unnamed Latin American state. Um, and they, they were just great. But as she's worn on, I found her books less satisfying. So that's The End of Days, which is all about people who were dead, um, sort of narrating European history. And Go, Gone, Go Went Gone, which got shortlisted for some literary prize I now can't remember, um, which I just thought was really bad. Uh, did I do a dedicated one on this? Can't remember. On to F, the Norwegian uh, noir writer Karin Fossum. So we've got 
When the Devil Holds the Candle, which I think is her most uh, famous and bad intentions. And what I really like about Karen Fossum, because I don't read a lot of crime fiction, but what I, I like about her is that um, she really concentrates on, on, a bit like sort of Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, she concentrates on the criminals and their sort of battles with guilt and their breakdown. And the detectives have an almost spectral presence in her books, or at least in these two. They're almost not there. It's not about them bringing the criminals to justice. It's almost like the ju criminals bring themselves to justice. She's a really interesting crime writer, I think. G, Leslie Glaister, As Far As You Can Go, and Limestone and Clay. Um, this is set in the Australian outback, where two people go and, and basically hell sit. Um, it's pretty spooky. And this is about potholing or caving. And, and so both sort of involve rock and earth and really sort of evocative landscapes. Uh, now, I know, I do have the next one. A.M. Holmes, M Music for Torching. She's just recently brought out a book of short stories. I can't really imagine her writing short stories because her, her novels, which I've read two and I have a third to read, they're about sort of very everyday American families, but every so often something really perverse and nasty happens. And it's about that sort of a bit sort of Twin Peaksy underbelly of, of sort of American suburban life but Holmes is really really good at writing that so I'm kind of intrigued about her short stories. Now we come to a letter that I failed at. I I don't have any uh, women writers whose surname begins with I. Now I have read Luke Irrigue. Um, uh, I think that is she a woman? Yeah I'm pretty sure she is um, but that's non-fiction and also I couldn't find the book so uh, if you know of any good authors you can recommend beginning with the name I, uh, the, the letter I, uh, please forward them. So on to Jay, The First Bad Man, a novel by Miranda July. So I have a dedicated half video to this. I really enjoyed this book. This is, you know, really, it's been, it's been a bit like sort of sopped around the mouth, you know, in a, in a fist fight. It's just, it's, it had an extraordinary effect on me and I just really enjoyed it in a sort of masochistic way. Um, she's also a filmmaker. I haven't seen any of her films, but Miranda July. K. Anna Cavan. My Madness, The Selected Writings, and Asylum Piece. As you can tell from this, this is an author who is beset by uh, um, mental illness. But some of the stories in this, there's a, a sort of science fiction story called Ice, which is extraordinary. Um, I really recommend Anna Cavan. L. Another sort of one in the classic canon, Clavis Lispector, uh, Brazilian uh, via sort of Ukraine, I think. Uh, Agua Viva and The Hour of Our Star. And again, I just find her really a writer that just gets inside you vis viscerally. Um, the Hour of the Star is a sort of study in, in sort of poverty in Brazil, but... It's also about writing and writing characters and the relationship of the author to the character. Because the character is the, is the poverty-stricken one. Um, and Agua Viva is a, is a brilliant book about um, an artist, you know, a painter, who has changed to writing prose to express you know, what, what she couldn't express in painting. And it comes up with some extraordinary insights and imagery. M. Julie Meyerson. Uh, sleepwalking and... Something might happen. Um, now, I think it's Julie Myerson and not uh, Rachel Cusk. I'm pretty sure it's Myerson. Who basically, her, in real life, her son is a, was, is a heroin addict. And she sort of, you know, she exploded all over the press because she basically sort of, um, you know, dobbed him into the authorities as a sort of desperate, tough love way of trying to break his addiction. And her books are about sort of family dynamics and stuff. But, you know, I haven't read her for a long time, but you know, I, I did enjoy them when I read, read them. Yeah. Uh, N. R. Here we go. And S. Nin, Henry and June. Um, I'm not a fan of Nin. I read this and I don't feel the need to read any others, but she is an absolute classic. And if you like that sort of literary erotica, uh, even though it's sort of pretty much based on real life, uh, Nin's the woman for you. Uh, sadly, she's not the woman for me. Uh, o. Um, now, I hope this counts as O, because this is an author called Deb Olin Unferth. Now, I, technically, I suppose she might be you. I don't know, because I don't know if Olin is is part of her Christian name or her surname. But anyway, uh, this is an interesting book. This is sort of quite um, <clears throat> experimental and quirky. Um, didn't quite work for me, but, you know, interesting. And if that doesn't count, 
I do have to be read, so Jenny O'Phil. Uh, it's part of the speculation, but I haven't read it yet, so I'm not counting it. Uh, P. Right. Marge, Marge Piercy, Woman on the Edge of Time. Now this, uh, Naomi Alderman, this is genuine uh, feminist science fine, not, not the power that you claim to be. This is a great book and a really good read about a woman who has sort of telepathic powers and has shown two versions of the future, one of which is sort of egalitarian and one which is not. And, you know, she's, you know, her character can influence which course of the future um, the, the Earth will go on. Great book. PQ. Anne Quinn. Unusual spelling of Quinn with just one N. Uh, three, which is about a menage a trois. And Berg, which was um, a sort of bit of a sort of noirish feel, on, on a bit like sort of Brighton... Uh, yeah, Brighton Rock by Graham Greene. So but, uh, Quinn was a, a 60s UK writer, very experimental. Uh, you know, her and B.S. Johnson are probably the two uh, experimental novelists that you'd point to coming out of Britain, um, or postmodernist, whatever you want to call it. Um, and again, I think someone who was beset with mental problems, I think she might have killed herself. I can't remember. Anyway, Anne Quinn, recommended read. Ah. Oh. Uh, Zelda Rianardo, who's an author you probably haven't heard of, uh, who's sort of uh, local to London, uh, who runs a, a literary night in Brixton every every quarter. Uh, but this is this is a great read. She's got her new book has come out, which is I think called Fukuyama Dreams, which I think is about that um, that nuclear plant in Japan that went into meltdown and, and sort of polluted the uh, the environment. So I will get round to reading that. But this is Kappa Scripti, which is her first novel, which it, it features a serial killer. Uh, and his links to uh, head hunting and head shrinking tribes. It's great. It's a great read. S. Oh God. Well, of course you can add so many for the letter S. Uh, but I've gone with Ali Smith. Uh, Hotel World, which didn't do a lot for me. Autumn, which I have a dedicated video on, was a you know really stimulating book. I've got Winter on order in paperback. It's due to arrive in October, and I will read all the quartet. Uh, T. And probably my favourite novelist now. There's a novelist to come who you'll see I have more books by than this novelist, but you know, I love, I love Scarlett Thomas. So this is the book you might have heard of her called The End of Mr. Y. This was a previous book to that called Popco. But this is the book that would get to my uh, all-time top 20, uh, Scarlett Thomas, uh, Our Tragic Universe, which is all about storytelling and how in the West stories have a sort of a structure, a beginning, middle, end, and a, a journey and all that. And, and she's offering a book which has no... She's trying to write a book that has no story. And she talks about sort of Eastern, uh, non-Western approaches to storytelling. It's great. And this is the follow-up called The Seed Collector. Collectors, sorry. Which is about uh, a seed which uh, is a sort of very powerful hallucinogenic. And uh, the family that are left behind uh, when their parents go off in search of it and, and don't return. And it's brilliant because it starts off with the family tree. And then you have the book's narrative, which is all the infidelities and secrets and, and lies. Um, sorry, it's my son just coming to the room. He's just got in. It is uh, one minute to one uh, in the afternoon and he's just come back from clubbing. So he came to show me that he was still okay, all right and alive. And the book ends with an alternative family tree in the light of all that has gone before. It's just a brilliantly simple but effective concept. So to Scarlett Thomas. Unfortunately for me, um, her next two books after The Sea Collectors have both been for children. And I don't really read kids' books, even though I'm sure hers will be very good. So slightly disappointing. You. Now, you always think you is going to be a challenging letter, but actually, we've already had the Deb Olin Amforth, who might be a you, but this is definitively a you. Deb De, uh, Dubravko Ugrasic. So this is Baba Yaga laid an egg in the... Um, Canongate Gate Myth series and uh, the Museum of Unconditional Surrender and the Ministry of Poems, just two supreme books. So Ugresic was a refugee uh, forced to move to Holland by the uh, breakup of former Yugoslavia and these two books are just dripping in insight and compassion and pain. Fantastic. She would almost be my favourite female writer. Uh, but this is the writer on W who... Um, I have the most books by. Can you guess who it is yet? Look at that. Jeanette Winterson. So uh, 
light housekeeping written on the body which I think is my favourite of hers because I'm always interested in the body as a locus of writing uh, the power book oh, that's annoying I was looking for that for one of my other videos I couldn't find it god damn it <laughs> um, weight which is part of the series of can again Cannongate Myths uh, Boating for Beginners uh, Gut Symmetries Sexy the Cherry Art and Lies Why Be Happy When You Could Be Normal which is uh, non-fiction it's her autobiogra autobiography and what a great title that is so I should say it's her autobiography after the first autobiography of hers sort of follows up follows that uh, Art and Art and Lies I've got twice, that's interesting. Is that right? Oh God, I've got the same book twice, so I didn't even know. And I, that means I've read it twice, one in each edition. Duh! That's extraordinary, okay. <laughs> and finally, um, The Daylight Gate, which was part of the... Yeah, so the amazing thing about this is that Hammer Films reformed and commissioned Winston to write a sort of gothic-y, witchy story. And this is it, and it's very good too. Uh, and then, unfortunately, I don't have anything for X, Y, and Z. Again, I will take happily take any um, recommendations. I suspect uh, X's will be Chinese women writers. Um, so there you have it. That is the first part of my A to Z author tag. Um, I've seen this going back to about 2015, so I'm really not going to tag anyone because I'm sure if you wanted to do this, you would have done it by now, three years later. Uh, I'm going to do the same for male writers. Um, I do have a man for Z. I think I have a man for I. But there was a, there was one surprising letter that I didn't have a male author for. But anyway, well, yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, not that I can remember what it is to spoil. Okay, so till next time. Thanks very much. Um, postscript. I forgot the letter V. Duh. Uh, and the reason for that is because I didn't actually have the book, um, but I wanted to uh, talk about it anyway. Um, that is Valerie Vale's uh, Angry Women, which is non-fiction. Uh, it's part of the research series that came out in the 80s or 90s, and there were books on freaks, pranks, modern primitives, J.G. Ballard, um, William Burroughs. It's a really good series. Uh, and this one is a series of interviews with... Uh, women performers and artists on the cutting edge so sort of quite avant-garde uh, people sort of performance artists like Karen Finley and Caroline Schneeman and, and, and people like that and obviously talks a lot about sex and, and gender and it's really good and we used to get these research uh, books in our record shop and I used to um, read a couple of chapters uh, of each during my uh, my lunch out, which is why I don't have it, but this will be the cover. So that's Valerie Vale uh, Research. So uh, sorry for that incompetence, uh, a writer who doesn't know his alphabet. Anyway, this definitely is. Till next time.